I'm having a really sad night, so I've decided to make a video, because, you know, that's really smart. Um, and what I want to talk about is um, the difference between social anxiety and avoidant personality disorder, because it overlaps a lot, but it's not automatic and it's not definite. Um, I personally think... Well, I've never had a diagnosis of social anxiety. Um, I don't think I have social anxiety. One of the reasons is because I make these videos. <laughs> Obviously, if I was truly, completely, 100% anxious, as opposed to just avoidant, I wouldn't make the videos. <laughs> I wouldn't be able to. I wouldn't be able to tolerate it. Um, one of the things I like to do is um, I like to hang around people. Um, I like to go to movies by myself because then you're in a room with people. I don't do it very often, maybe once a year, maybe twice. Um, let me see, what else do I do? Um, I like to go on day trips to busy cities where there's tons of people around. I like to go to places around where I live that have, um, you know, large numbers of people the more the merrier, as far as I'm concerned, because I can sort of lose myself. Um, like I have a, a Facebook account where I basically um, accepted everybody as long as I didn't know them. <laughs> uh, if they're relatives or somebody actually knew, I, I have so many people. I have probably 3,000 people on my Facebook as friends. <laughs> And I might have ever met maybe 15 of them. The rest of them are just people that sent me friend requests. And I'm like, okay, yeah, sure. Um, because it, it's, it's easier for me to hide in a crowd than it is to be, um, you know, with a few people. I can't have sort of intimate relationships of any sort with people. If I'm grocery shopping and the checkout person recognizes me, I need to go to a different store. That's how I work. Um, so this is what I know, and it's really hard for me to understand. I mean, some people that are social, you know, I mean, the classic thing is if you absolutely cannot use a public restroom, <laughs> That's a good sign that you have social anxiety, um, as opposed to just a weak personality disorder. Um, I'm having a really hard time not apologizing for not having my face completely made up. Anyway, <laughs> um, yeah, so I guess I just did. But anyway, um, so the the difference is with social anxiety disorder is you can't be around people. I mean, that's not what avoidant personality disorder is. Avoidant personality disorder is, is that you can't have intimate interpersonal relationships with people. It's completely different. Um, and so if you have anxiety attacks basically all the time from being around people, that's social anxiety. Um, if you can be around people as long as you're anonymous, but as soon as somebody starts to get to know you, etc., um, then you have um, problems with that, that's avoidant personality disorder. And that's, that's so simple to me to see that that's the truth, because clearly, like I said, I don't think that I have social anxiety. And I think that if I wasn't avoidant, it would be a completely different matter. Now, of course, and this is also separate from introversion. I'm an introverted person, meaning I prefer to be by myself. Um, and I, when I'm around other people, it feels like they're pulling the energy out of me and I'm losing something just being around people. Extroverted people, when they're around people, it energizes them and they get more energy. Um, that's completely separate. Uh, fabulous analogy that I heard was, um, if you watch Harry Potter, when the Dementors come around and they 
they do that thing where they're sucking the soul out, but you can see it's like this mist coming off the person. That is like the most perfect visual, you know, thing I've ever seen of, um, of what it means to be introverted. That's exactly what it's like. If you don't have social anxiety though, that's not automatic. It's just, you know, it's, it's, if people talk to you, it feels like, you know, they're sucking the life out of you, but to be just around them doesn't trigger massive, um, sort of anxiety. Um, like for instance, this seems kind of braggy. Um, I go to the gym a lot, obviously. It's not really doing that much. I do it because, um, I, of course, not happy a lot. This is part of the diagnosis of being avoidant. Um, and because it's a personality disorder as opposed to a brain chemical problem, um, medicines do not work. So I go to the gym because it sort of helps when medicines don't. It it just sort of grounds me. But I go to the to the gym uh, where there's people around, and as long as I'm not being stared at, which usually doesn't happen, as long as nobody talks to me, I'm totally fine with being around people. If, if you can't stand the idea of going to the gym and, and you have to work out at home, you do work out, but you work out at home and you refuse to go to a gym because there's people there, that's a difference between social anxiety and avoidant personality disorder. And you can have both, um, or you can have one or the other. Um, so, yeah, so I think a lot of people think that anxiety, um, that social anxiety is like, say, a level two, and that if you have a level five, that's avoidant personality disorder, and that is not true at all. Um, first of all, if it is a true anxiety, then medication will work, <laughs> and I'm applauding people for whom medication works. I think that's kind of awesome. I kind of really wish that there was something that worked on me, but it doesn't because I have a personality disorder and that's not a brain chemical problem and it's never going to get better. Um, I just have to deal with it. Um, so they are, they are completely different. They're not just, oh, if you're anxious, then suddenly it elevates and suddenly you get, um, avoidant personality disorder. That's not how they work. They are really completely separate things and I think I'm sort of talking around this because it is really hard to pull them apart uh, and it's really hard to diagnose avoidant personality disorder. It's really hard to see it differently and when people have one or both of these things it's, it's really hard to get outside of yourself and to um, not see what you have in the little bits that are, um, your quirks and see them as the whole thing and to attribute everything in your life to the avoidance when that's actually not true. Um, and I, I'm, I'm not sure how much it would help people other than trying to understand a diagnosis. I mean, I personally, I've never, I don't think I've ever seen a real true distinction other than, like I said, you know, there's the introversion, extroversion thing, which is literally, do you get energy from being around people or does being around people make you feel like your energy level is dropping? That's introversion, extroversion. Social anxiety is being around anyone for any reason whatsoever, being around people makes you have a physical reaction in your body where you are anxious. Avoidant personality disorder doesn't necessarily, it can match up with either of those two. There are extroverted people who have, um, who have avoidant personality disorder, which is kind of awesome. And, uh, I, you know, it's not many of them, but they're really interesting people as far as I'm concerned, because wow. <laughs> You would think that they would be stapled together, that you have one, you must have the other, but you don't. Um, um, avoidant personality disorder basically is that you can't have intimate relationships with people. So you can be around people, um, or you, maybe you can't, 
You can or you can't, um, but you just can't interact with them. You can't um, have anything beyond a superficial type relationship with them. And um, there are people out there that you might think of as okay, that you're, even though you're telling things about yourself, it still feels superficial. So it's okay. So there are a lot of people that think of themselves as friends of avoidance, that the avoidant people don't think that way about them. Um, because if they did suddenly click in that, ooh, this is somebody who would be a friend, then it freaks them out and um, they would have to drop them, which is really sad. And that's how avoidance works. So I hope I've illuminated this a little bit. Um, if it's still terribly confusing, please let me know. And maybe I'll do a second part two or whatever that um, explains it a little more clearly. See, I understand it. It makes sense to me. But um, it's very possible that <laughs> I haven't really explained it very well. So if that's the case, let me know. And um, maybe I'll do a follow-up.